Okay, yeah, right, there we go, right. All right, um, well, we're going to get started here. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Sandbox Collaborative. Uh, what a fabulous space to be able to uh, explore um, new ideas and new concepts. My name is Bill Mayer. I'm the university librarian for Southern New Hampshire University. Uh, it's great that you're here today. I'm grateful in particular to the Sandbox for um, working with us on, on this new round of collaboration. Today we have Elliot Felix and Amanda Wirth from Bright Spot Strategy. Uh, Bright Spot, I said, not Bright Space. Um, the different <laughs> elements. Bright spaces too. Okay, that's good. Um, uh, just a couple of housekeeping ideas. The restrooms are through the kitchen on the right. Um, as well, if you're paying attention to all things library, as I know you are, because that's why you're here today, um, on October 18th on the campus uh, library facility <coughs> from 2 to 4 p.m. in the Zakos Cafe, we're running a human library, which is really a, a another engagement opportunity for people to come learn about uh, new avenues in life, the universe, and everything, where you can come talk to different books that are actually humans. And so it's a really interesting and engaging way to learn something new. So come by the library facility October 18th, 2 to 4 p.m. Check it out. <laughs> Sorry, a little library pun. Anyway, um, <laughs> I'm going to get out of the way and uh, turn it over to Elliot and Amanda, and uh, we'll, um, we'll see what new avenues we can start exploring together. Thank you all. That's great. Thanks, Bill. Well, we're really, really excited to be here, and uh, we, have a, we have an engaging, uh, quite interactive session planned, but luckily we, we knew that lunch was going to happen in the beginning, so you don't have to roll up your sleeves quite... Um, quite yet um, and we're going to I think hit on these these four things we're first we're going to introduce ourselves and we'll start by just uh, going around the room and hearing who all of you are quickly uh, and that's going to be kind of a rapid fire exercise we'll introduce bright spot we'll talk about some trends we've we've been seeing uh, user research and how to understand who you're who you're supporting and um, how you might bring together services and think about them differently and then how you might use that to kind of kickstart uh, thinking about how you organize yourself differently. Um, and uh, we're really excited for this, for this session. Well, that's great. So just a little bit, a little bit about us. Um, we're an experienced design and strategy consultancy. So the best way to think about Brightspot is a group of smart people who make experiences in a physical place better. And a great example is the place we're in. So if you think about what makes coming to the sandbox great, um, it's awesome spaces. Uh, but it's also the services that are offered, you know, events, food, help, assistance, advice. Um, and it's also the way people are organized to provide those services, the culture of helping, which we've already kind of experienced in the, the customer service. So what Brightspot does is bring those three things together so that people get better experiences. And we do that across a variety of different sectors, um, museums, higher ed, tech companies, and um, we use kind of a practical approach to transformation that brings together the space, the services, and the people. Um, we're very results oriented. We want people to have their net promoter score shoot up. We want their satisfaction scores, their engagement scores. Uh, we want them to do it uh, as a more effective team, to work faster at less cost. Um, ho hopefully hit all those, hit all those in one time. Um, we do it with a process that uh, starts by conducting research, looking out, looking in, uh, so you understand where you are, where you're going, setting the vision for where you're going, coming together uh, through perhaps a retreat, uh, then creating strategy around the space, the services, the people, and implementing and assessing through pilots and prototypes and th these kinds of more kind of agile uh, approaches to implementation. And uh, we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit about that and show some examples today. Uh, have some discussion, do some activities. Um, I usually make a joke about rolling up sleeves. At least two people, I think, have them already rolled up, which is great. Three, um, four, actually. See, it's it's this is a great crowd, and um, none of that would be possible without bringing together a, a lot of different disciplines. So we have uh, people with space backgrounds, user research, social science, organizational change, business strategy, um, and we 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 kind of think of ourselves as a bit of a sandbox. So. Uh, we're also, Orange is our brand, so like being here is amazing. It just feels, feels right. Um, 
So uh, a, couple, a couple quick stories, and the way today is going to work is we're basically going to present for five minutes and then open it up for discussion for 10, and we'll kind of rinse and repeat a few times, and in there will be a hands-on activity to use a tool that is freely available that we find is really helpful for people to think differently about services, whether they're trying to deliver them in a different way or at a different time or address certain pain points or uh, maybe do them in a more integrated kind of fashion. So. With that, we'll have at it. And um, you know, we think it's always good to look in and look out. And uh, looking out really means l thinking about the external trends that might be driving change or impacting how you do things differently. Um, not too long ago, we did a project for Georgia Tech where they wanted to understand how teaching, learning, and research were changing uh, at their institution in order to kind of inform a sort of a renewal or a reboot of their library. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we, as part of this study, we mined data, we interviewed people, we shadowed people, we ran lots of workshops, we interviewed lots of people, we looked at the trends, you know, gate count going up, checkouts going down, physical checkouts going down. Um, and I think the first trend that we were really cognizant of uh, was digital first. And this was sort of a, this was sort of a mindset shift. Um, the library is actually a digital place and it has a physical place to complement it. Um, this was sort of a shift in thinking that we were seeing in other, in other sectors, and um, this was kind of a starting point for, for us, is let's think of the library as digital first, and then the role of our space is actually to kind of uh, enhance how those services are offered, how people access that information, how they connect uh, with each other. Um, the other trend we identified was uh, it's not just our stuff, it's everybody's stuff. So we're part of an ecosystem and we have to, we have to, part of our job has to be connecting our users to more than just what we have um, and helping them, you know, helping them navigate. Um, the other thing I think was realizing that we're part of an experience economy. And so if we're really interested in student success and faculty success, um, that we have to understand the kinds of experiences we want them to have <coughs> and then think about the kind of the different touch points, the different moments in that experience and how to make them better for, uh, for students, for faculty and for staff because you, know, you kind of have to balance both sides of the, of the equation. One of the things we did with that is create this experience model where it was thinking about um, what are the key moments uh, for a student uh, or a faculty member from discovery to focus to growing to creating to showcasing um, and then think about what could be learned from other sectors so the the service point within the library was quite intentionally called the library store um, and the idea being that uh, we can sort of learn from retail and we can make what we're offering more visible we can do it more proactively um, and we can pilot it uh, and test lots of things out which is just what you're seeing um, the fourth thing um, we learned and then applied was that users expect a voice, right? People, the, the people, and by the way, it's the right thing to do, not e even if they weren't expecting it, um, involving, involving people in the change you're trying to create uh, just gets you better ideas and it gets you more momentum and more, uh, and more support. And this happens in a variety of different things. You know, people want to give you their input, whether it's a review or a tweet or a workshop or a focus group or an unsolicited suggestion. Um, so we, we made that possible through workshops, but also once we had a whole bunch of ideas, we put them out for the campus to upvote and downvote. And then we focused on the best, uh, I think we, we started off with like 20 things and we focused on the top eight or so. Um, much to my chagrin, the loyalty program sort of ended up on the cutting room floor, but that's for another, that's for another day. Um, and then the other thing is that organizations are really evolving and um, in a time when you have to move fast and there's lots of uncertainty and change, uh, top down doesn't work. So, uh, and by the way, people will be less engaged. So uh, we really wanted to use this project as a way to sort of shift the thinking of how people were organized and um, do things like, uh, you know, Frederick Laloux talks about in Reinventing Organizations, he talks about how uh, there's a sort of an evolution over time, different management paradigms each era. And his argument is that we're now in the era when uh, an organization, a company, uh, an institution 
is kind of like a living organism, and leadership's job is to sort of sort of sense its direction, sense its momentum, facilitate it getting there, as opposed to you know sort of trying to like push it uphill, let's say. Um, so once we identified these top eight ideas, we put out a call. We had a bunch of self-organized staff teams, and Brightspot sort of facilitated their uh, development of these these eight new service service offerings, mapping things out. As you can see, it was complicated. Uh, and it took a lot of post-its to, uh, to figure out, but, uh, but we, we did it. Um, so a snapshot of how you might think externally and then apply it uh, to, your, to yourself. And we'd love to, this is gonna be one of our, um, uh, you know, one of our kind of discussion moments today. And we'd love to hear from you about the kind of external trends that, uh, that are affecting, affecting you all. And I, we now realize there's more than uh, there's a bunch of institutions here, so um, just affecting you, let's say. Mm -hmm. And it's how, how are you? How are you guys thinking about these? How how might you be responding mm. to some of these things? And I'll, if you're at a at a wide angle, I can read them out. Competition, alternative credentials, uh, different expectations for content, uh, fake news, alternative facts, um, shifting audience demographics, and more social sharing. I'll address the alternative credentials because sure. that was my um, suggestion. Uh, we have created an entire unit at the university to um, look at, explore, and uh, deliver other types of products that have not been part of the portfolio mm -hmm. in the past. So our, one of our ways to address it is to actually build a structure mm -hmm. around thinking about it and figuring out how to engage mm -hmm. and be a player in that new space. That's great. Becoming what are called clusters, which are integrated departments that will also do more practical work with organizations and companies in the community. Hmm. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. All right. How might you understand your users? All right, um, so Elliot talked a little bit about looking out, um, and I'll walk through some ways to look in. And this is a little bit of a process for conducting research and uh, as well as a case study um, that we did with um, Portland State University. So um, we worked with them to, as part of their Rethink PSU initiative, and this was a campus-wide, a large um, uh, program to rethink education. Um, and there was a lot of components of that. Um, one particular element of it was online learning. Um, and this was a focus on adult learners. So they took it from the lens of those who are using the online platform, a more flexible platform, um, to advance their education later in life. Um, and so this was a, a multi-year initiative. We were pulled in specifically for that component, um, sort of developing that further. So the first thing that we did in order to kind of understand the um, situation on campus with users was to look at the existing data. And that's something that um, you know, can be done fairly quickly. It might require some gathering and some coordinating because there's certainly a lot of systems, a lot of data across campus. Um, and that was their, the working group. Their first part was looking at the systems, the staffing, the technology that was in place, and really doing a gap analysis, understanding um, what they had, and also looking um, out, as Elliot was saying, sort of looking at best practices in, um, at other institutions where people were seeing success, kind of the shifts that were happening, and then doing, again, that, that gap analysis, um, as well as looking at external research that's done on the way users are shifting. And so this was a, a report from the Parthenon group that was about <clears throat> the different expectations that students had and um, uh, describing them by their sort of experience through uh, higher education, through their learning. So that was uh, more on their psychographics as opposed to demographics, but um, talking about uh, an aspiring academic versus maybe an academic wanderer. So somebody who really kind of knows where they're headed uh, versus someone who might be trying multiple directions. And so we used this um, to really identify where to start 
um, and where to dive a little bit deeper. Uh, and this is really sort of the, um, as we were working with the working group there, um, an opportunity to kind of get out in the field, talk to students, to faculty, to staff across the campus to learn um, really what's happening um, on the ground. So a couple of ways that we conduct that is um, listening, conducting interviews, whether in home or um, you know, in dorm and um, also intercepts around the campus to really kind of reach out to students um, where they're at. We did in-home um, stories with some of the adult learners to hear how they were managing their education um, through multiple platforms, through uh, you know, working, having a job, having a family, you know, all of the um, uh, personal needs that they were balancing. We also uh, looking, uh, kind of observing what's happening, doing an audit of kind of the current experience or the commu current communications um, can be a little bit of a, a study for the team to do, um, really looking at the patterns. So for uh, PSU, we uh, defined six activity modes, and this was uh, primarily what um, adult learners were balancing their time between and really what they were um, juggling kind of in their experience um, pursuing their education and then also engaging so getting people around the table bringing together um, you know users uh, staff faculty people who work with the uh, adult learners and really um, mining their institutional knowledge their experience in order to uh, you know sort of externalize what we were learning and refine that reflect on it um, and improve our understanding and from that, uh, you know, generating insights. So how can we take what we're learning, all of the data that we're gathering, and um, put it in a way that we can start to design new experiences, new services, in order to better support them? So this is an example. Um, you know, from the research that was done, we pulled many different opportunities, different unmet needs um, that that we could pursue, but we focused in on three, sort of understanding that we can't um, rehaul the entire experience, but there's key moments where we can make the most impact. And so part of that was, um, again, for adult learners, they come in with a sort of patchwork of previous experience or um, you know, maybe they've done a partial program, they have some credits, you know, do those transfer, and that really kind of complicates um, how they plan their degree. So uh, an improved degree mapping, an interactive or visual degree mapping um, was the solution that we were trying to um, unpack. So identifying kind of the key um, opportunity for pursuing a solution, uh, understanding the pain points, and then also looking at that experience map that we want to create um, in the future. So that was, uh, again, kind of a few approaches to understanding users better. And so I don't know if there's, we can uh, open it up to hear sort of what you, what data you already have, what do you know about your users, um, and what might be some opportunities to <coughs> learn more. The first step there of using the data that you already have, I mean, can be a bit of a, you know, there is an effort that needs to be made to bring that data together. Um, and having a working group that can speak to the experiences they've had and really sort of tap that institutional knowledge um, can be really valuable for just bringing out what we already know. Are there any efforts, I, I'm not sure, on campus to, for, sort of the user research or kind of on campus, whether it's kind of reaching out to students in one-on-one -on -one ways, or maybe, maybe it's more a survey platform, any, any ways that you currently engage students? No, uh, we work with NCEDA right now. Um, we reach out because they have different levels of motivation. Mm -hmm. They have different levels of preparedness for college. Um, you know, I think you talked about the academic wanderers versus those who are committed to a degree. They, know, they see their goal clearly. So I think it's, it's it, when, from what we see, there's a, some people know their goals very clearly and others don't. Right. And some people are prepared to work in an academic environment and some aren't. Mm -hmm. So it's right. a spectrum. Different, <laughs> yeah, yeah, expectations yeah. for the yeah. kind of services they might even look for if they're aware of them. In, in some of them, yes, and some of them have become 
a lot of students have become lazy and they just do the tried and true. I'm going to Google whatever I need to know and, mm. you know. Yes, the easiest um, way to find. Group, yep. yep. <laughs> Um, in terms of information sharing and um, systems, I'm a former UC academic advisor. Um, and so I think it's about relationships amongst colleagues on campus um, and trying to gain that holistic knowledge of our students. I know we used to use CRM for putting notes in, mm -hmm. but not everyone has access to CRM. Not everyone uses it in the same way. So I think there's a gap there in terms of how we can more efficiently share information. Right. Um, tools that can help real-time information sharing be, um, behind the scenes is extremely valuable. Great. All right. Well, we'll um, our next um, topic is about bringing services together. So certainly hits at um, some of the points uh, around, you know, a lot of different touch points for students, a lot of different um, needs are based on kind of the expectations or um, their previous experience. So we, um, we think about Brightspot, thinks about service design um, in the why, what, when, where, and how. So kind of a simple framework, but really sort of thinking um, about the intention behind the service. Why are we providing it? What do we hope to achieve? Um, what are those services? So kind of specifically, what do we offer? Um, and also thinking about how that's navigated by users, what are the kind of categories of services. Obviously, we have departments, and we sort of name our services after our departments, um, but sometimes the user can come in with different questions or different expectations. Um, when, so, uh, you know, what time of day, uh, where, and how. So uh, thinking about where it is, whether it's um, a service desk or if it's online, is it a high touch? You know, how are you providing that service? Is it a consultation or is it kind of um, frequent check-ins? Uh, and so, you know, we've um, written about this sort of in our experience seeing shifts um, and a lot of challenges that are happening as many of the things that you've already mentioned, kind of the different expectations, the changing demographics. Um, changing departments, you know, it's really um, being provided, services are being provided differently. So we have a service center canvas to help think through how services can be offered and it really goes through those different, um, the why, what, who, where, how, when, as well as metrics and thinking about next steps. And this is, um, again, sort of a trend we're seeing towards consolidated service points. So certainly having um, a worksheet or a tool to help think that through, identify any opportunities for um, um, coordinating services, or if there's any um, overlap, making sure that when those services come together that they're um, operating efficiently. So this was a challenge that the University of Virginia was um, facing. And <clears throat> as you may not be able to read all of these, but these were all of the services that students are offered. Um, and all of the ones that they're trying to navigate between, that they're maybe going to the wrong one in order to ask a question that can be um, provided elsewhere. And so they were taking on an initiative to think about total advising. And so this was trying to break through the um, sort of um, uh, shared or I guess kind of advising as it's typically defined um, into something that looks at the full student experience. So in that process, uh, we started again sort of with our research, understanding users and some of the pain points and goals that we wanted to achieve in this total advising uh, service center uh, was the uh, opportunities to provide more awareness. Um, certainly students are not always aware of the services that are offered to them. Um, or where they're offered or who's offering them. Uh, making connections, so an interesting um, kind of finding was that students are eager to do a lot of the um, services they need online or you know, in a quick chat, but when it was a bigger uh, problem or challenge that they were facing, they wanted to meet someone in person and really make a connection, um, be able to troubleshoot that together and feel that um, personal support. 
and part of that was the expertise. So really un, um, trusting and understanding that the person they were meeting with uh, knew how to help them. Um, and then also the convenience uh, factor. So certainly looking for the easiest way to um, answer their questions, but trying to answer multiple questions um, in one convenient location. So in designing the service center, we had six goals. Um, understanding the balance of physical and digital and offering both. Um, there may be some, again, kind of demographics or users that prefer one over the other, or they may just start um, digital and then move to uh, consultation physically. Thinking about helping and directing. So sometimes you need to help someone work through a challenge, um, and other times you need to direct them to uh, where they can solve it themselves or to another person. So balancing uh, the type of service that's provided. Uh, integration, so thinking about multiple services offered in one location, kind of a one-stop shop. Advisors as guides, kind of a new, or just kind of rethinking what the role was um, for advisors was really to guide people. Uh, flexibility and choice, so certainly, you know, with um, kind of the different platforms, different times, offering students choice. Um, and really leaving them with, you know, feeling engaged and empowered so that they, um, you know, that the service, the help was able to move them uh, forward and past their challenges. The next second part is really the service plan, and this is kind of the nuts and bolts of the um, what, where, when, and how, um, and really just outlining that. And part of that is identifying again sort of where there might be efficiencies made or coordination between different services and also thinking about those categories. You know, we again sort of talk about our services in one way, um, but what is the way that's going to be most uh, resonant with uh, students or your users. And finally, next steps. So this <coughs> is really looking at um, maybe there's a particular service or a component, a new delivery option that you're thinking about, um, sort of identifying those opportunities to test, to pilot, to prototype, and learn more about, or maybe gathering additional data about the user needs. Um, and again, for the University of Virginia, they were really um, bringing together a lot of different groups and also thinking about partners that can help um, deliver these services and how uh, they will all or they may require different space models. So depending on the service or depending on the partner, um, they were allocated different space uh, service points. So it might be something that was, um, you know, kind of at the top here is uh, if they have a large amount of back of house space and they're offering a lot of services, they kind of have a dedicated uh, service point. Whereas something might be visiting or um, just coming in and using the space for a certain amount of time. So a range of different uh, service points, but again, kind of in that, that one consolidated center. So this is the tool that we'd like to practice with you to um, have you sort of test out, think about, um, even if it's bringing just you know two separate uh, services together, thinking about how um, there might be some partners or various departments, different services that could be offered in a service center. Um, and it goes through kind of uh, the three steps that I uh, just walked through. Again, understanding the why, sort of the goals and the pain points that you're addressing. In the middle is kind of the meat of it, really describing the what, where, who um, of each of the services. And finally, the next steps on the right here. So this is kind of opportunities to either gather more data, um, how to ant you know, what barriers might you anticipate, um, and also opportunities for pilots or prototypes. So yes, questions? That certainly could be uh, an option, I think. Um, if we're thinking of it, uh, sort of the services that would be offered in that place. So if that is um, a location that the student can go to answer those, um, if it is kind of more of like a concierge that's going to direct them, that might be a little light on the services. Um, but this is kind of a focus more on bringing the um, departments and people uh, together that will be providing the service. 
Is that? Right. Yeah, physically, and, and again, the the previous was maybe they have a desk and they're they're seated there all day, but it might be something where they're able to come in to um, you know sort of respond to the need for this. Yep. Yep. Let me riff on that actually for a second, uh, Linda, real quick. I think one of the um, elements of enjoyment we have here at the university is that we have all these different academic units or programs that are doing really excellent work and have many um, similar service points um, but are still somewhat siloed because they're serving their own particular population. Mm -hmm. And then overlay that a um, commitment to making a shared experience across the university for the student. We're in the new stages of this. How do you move from you know, on-site to online to at work, so to speak. I think those are the, the little elements we hear talking about. So in terms of how do you build a service that is completely fidgetal in the sense that it, you might encounter it online, mm -hmm. you might also encounter the same elements in, in person depending on where you are, when you are, you know, who and what you are. Um, so that's, that, I think that's what we're trying to, to get here too, is just that sort of element towards how do you identify those commonalities? How do you connect around them? And then what sorts of things do you need to do? Mm -hmm. Is that right? Am I, is this, I think is the, this on? Hello? Yeah. So. <laughs> the duplication of services is really kind of speaks to that opportunity to consolidate them. Okay, any other questions about kind of this? Otherwise, we'll break into groups of three, um, three or four, I'd say, uh, and we have worksheets we'll hand out. So there's tables here. There's also kind of the, the lounge area there that may um, have s surfaces to work on. Or we can break up these tables too. And we'll come back at, what time? We'll come back here at 1.15 and share a little bit about what, um, you know, what you pulled together and what you learned from this canvas. <laughs>